Good morning. This is week four of painting things from a September garden. That actually went very quickly, I thought, that four weeks. And I must say, I haven't touched the surface of all the interesting things that I can see in my garden. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens next month. Um, hopefully there'll be lots of lovely leaves and um, leaves that are turning beautiful colours and we'll, we'll certainly be getting involved with those anyway. But this week um, I'm going to paint teasels, um, which look difficult. Um, as you can see, there's one there. They've got lots of um, aspects, twiddly bits and spiky bits. Um, and I suppose you can make them difficult, but I'm going to try to show you some simpler methods of portraying them this time um, and these are the colours that I'm going to use on my demo um, so you can see those and I'll also show you some that I did earlier in different ways so first of all I just well I'll use this first of all I just want to um, show you one method and I think it's not a particularly good idea to, to draw the whole thing but it might be a good idea just to actually create that basic shape all right because what tends to happen if you're not careful is you you will not have a wide enough bottom and it won't have a, a, a tape more tapered top um, so one method might be, once you've drawn that shape, might be to mask off some of these little stamens. And you can do that by using one of these tools. Okay, so I'll just show you the method of doing that. In fact, there's very little mileage in um, masking off ones that are actually not within the, sh the, the shape that you've made there. So maybe that would be all you'd need to do. And apart from maybe getting a finer tool and putting in some of those little spiky bits. Looking carefully at which way they actually sit. And they all tend to sort of point upwards a little bit. Just a few to make sure that you get a little bit of light in there when you start painting. So that's all you would need to do if you decide to, to use masking. I don't always, but sometimes I do. So give your masking fluid a good shake before you use it and then you won't get the thick blobby bits on your tool um, before you start to work. So I've started that one by pushing a few of those little um, spiky bits on and I'm not actually going to worry too much about um, masking any going, the longer ones going, going up. I've done it on there and when that's completely dry I'll take that off and you can see what's happened there. But I'll show you a couple of ways now, one with that masking going on um, and one without. So I've got raw sienna, which I'm actually going to put down as a little base covering. And I'm actually dotting it in and going past my line. We don't want a smooth edge. So I'm going past that line and I'm dotting it in because I want to create that sort of textured effect at the same time as making a rougher edge and leaving white paper. So you can work reasonably wet, but I didn't wet the whole thing first because I want to keep that white paper showing and I'm leaving that centre where I want to put the dark in. So every time I wet my brush I actually control it on my towel, which you don't generally see. Um, but have a piece of kitchen roll or toweling there to actually control your water because you don't want that to get too this to get too wet because you'll lose the control and you'll fill it in. 
So I'm now on the top of that while that's still damp, popping some burnt sienna. Just so going to bring some warmth in. I don't necessarily stick exactly to the colours I see, but this is a bit similar. And actually they do dry up all sorts of different tones anyway. I'm going to put a little bit of quinacridone on that side because that's my lighter side just to bring in a bit of light down there. And then some, I've got some perylene violet which I prefer to use for a dark over the top of this because it creates a nice brown colour without it being too brown. It's, uh, it's got more warmth to it. So what I'm doing is dotting all of this in, starting my light colour and then working up to the dark. And I'm creating some dark now by putting some ultramarine blue and the raw sienna and a little bit of the perylene to keep it warm and nice and dark, but still not a nice dark, not black. And I'm achieving the little white spaces that I wanted as well. So there's going to be quite a bit of dark under here. So while it's still wet, I'm actually going to clean my brush, pop it in clean water, take the excess off, and you've seen me do this before to create texture. I'm just dotting in water to make these lovely little colours mingle now. And I've gone completely over the masking fluid to create the marks that I need there because I've covered them with paint. Right, so now while that's still damp, here's the fun bit. Use your sword brush, have a tissue because the, the ferrule tends to get quite wet and you don't want to make it too wet to do this. But I'm going to actually use all the colours that I've been using within that subject there and pull out the little spiky bits at the edge and they all tend to go in a similar direction but not too stiff and not too perfect. So I'm partly pulling it out and I've partly put a little bit more on my brush. And you must keep it slightly damp and you must use the point. Don't use it as a flat because you'll get too flat a mark. Okay. So where it's pulling it away, the paint away here as well, it's actually bringing some light in so I'm getting that rounded effect and they do tend to get quite long at the top there so you could carefully just put a few longer ones in and maybe they get a little bit bent sometimes so you know just make if you're doing a whole page create interest by making different shapes within them so now you need to think about creating a bit of stalk light to dark and it has a kind of stripe to it so try and achieve that as well and while that's still damp again make sure every time you wet this brush that you take some of that excess away and just bring out a few of the little thorns and now the fun starts because we've got to create those lovely, I don't know what they are, dried up spiky bits. Not really stamens, are they? So all those lovely colours can be used. So you've got to let the brush do the work here. Bear down and up. And this is why you've got to make sure that your brush isn't too wet so that it doesn't drop colours in and more water in than you actually really need. So look at your subject. You could maybe make one go up there like that. Right, I've just done 10 minutes. Okay, 
Okay, maybe that's enough. You can do as many as you like. They all do take on lovely, lovely, lovely shapes. So we'll let that one dry, I think. But I'll just show you this one because there you can see all the lovely shapes that they do actually create if they don't get broken off. So if you have them, take care of them because they will break. And um, they do actually have such wonderful shapes going on. So you can really go to town with these twiddly bits and let this brush do the work for you. I'll put one more in I think and let's put the one with a curl. So up and round and curl. Sometimes you do just have to go over but try and avoid it if possible. I didn't have enough on my brush. There we go. Um, right, so that's that one. I'm going to do just one more without worrying about the masking fluid or anything and see how I get on just painting it without. Here we go for the shape, lovely big one. No masking fluid at all on this one and maybe a bit wetter because I want you to realise that anything and everything can be painted loosely if you want to. So I'm actually going to paint this one a little bit looser, a little bit wetter, letting it float a little bit and seeing what happens here and maybe popping in a bit of background. Similar process. Splattering works very well with these when you've completed your picture as well, I always think. It looks like the little seeds. Right, so make sure you've got a strong enough pigment going on there because when it dries it's going to dry lighter and you don't want it to get too weak. Have this quinacridone magenta, this um, quinacridone gold this side so that it's a little bit brighter. And trying very hard to leave white paper. White paper in anything and everything always actually looks so good. It gives light and life to your pictures. This is turning a bit green, it doesn't really matter. Maybe a bit of perylene violet on there will stop that happening. It's lovely allowing all these little colours to mingle. And then with the tip of your brush, drop some water in, let these colours mingle. And why not a bit more blue down here? But I'm actually going to create a bit of background here by just allowing this side to float away. I want that to be quite grey. No, sort of grey green, as if we're it's sitting outside somewhere and there's some foliage going on perhaps. Sorry about that. Tech team will get that with a bit of luck. There we go, that's nice. Keeping this edge lovely and free. Right. So now we need to show where the stalk's going to go. And if, as I've said before, if you're doing a lot, don't put the whole of the stalk in because they, it might just get in the way of anything else that you want to paint. So I'm painting quite wet here at the moment. So, sword brush, making sure it doesn't get too wet. And let's pull the little spiky things out. 
so nice doing this. So don't be fussy with it if you're going to paint it nice and loosely like this. And, and let things happen that might be unpredictable. Now we need, when that's dry, you could actually pull out a few spikes this side as well, because it's too wet to actually see anything like that at the moment. And you probably don't really need to. So now, Let's have a look at what some of these things do. Letting the brush do the work. Bearing down and pulling up. Well, that was a big one. I think that's it really. I could have one just coming out from behind up here. Maybe a broken one. And let that to let that, that dry. I quite like this. There's a lot all together here and so you do see quite a a big clump of stuff at the bottom there so don't be afraid of letting a bit more happen at the bottom there we go so we'll let that dry and see what happens and while we're waiting for that i'll just take off this masking here so you can see what happens if you actually do use your masking fluid to create those shapes that are in front of your teaser It's a bit odd when it's wet. I mean, when it's um, not got any colour on it. So what you can do is then go in with just a little light wash of whatever you want. This is burnt sienna. And dot a bit over the top so that those little tiny fine spiky bits actually create some perspective for you there. A bit of depth at the bottom I think it needs. So I don't know if you can see what that's done but that's a little what I would do actually when that's dry is give it one dark side so that it matches up with these a bit more as a shadow. It's looking a bit alien at the moment. So that's an option there. Um, I'll see what happens when this is dry, but I'll show you some I did early while we're waiting. Um, you might want to be a bit more precise with yours, and um, this one actually is painted a little bit more precisely. Can you see? That's a very long one, so I can't get it all in. But I actually mingled it with some um, poppy heads as well, which I think I demonstrated during lockdown, what seems like a year ago. Um, but maybe we'll do them again sometime. And certainly you might want to put some of those and these teasels also in your, in your nice montage that you're creating. So there's that one. And in fact, that one actually had some some nice leaves as well the leaves when they dry do fantastic things but i haven't got any at the moment so this is another one i did using that um little idea that i had the other day with um putting a part of the background around in, in a shape so if some of you have tried this and done a very good job, so maybe you want to try again and, and use that idea again. That worked quite well and the blue against the yellows looked really, really nice. Um, 
I think some of these were masked. I think within the, the, the shape, I think I masked some. So um, they would show up when I put the background on. Um, but the other thing I want to say is you don't have to always paint the colours that you see. Why not do a lovely page of different coloured ones? There's the blue and all those colours I was using, but more besides, and painted differently. There's some spattering. This one's got some, um, some ink, some pen on. That might be nice to do also, so maybe try different things. And that one, like I showed before, has got a little bit of a looseness to it. Um, as has this one um, completely loose so that one um, I really did enjoy painting that's my favourite way of painting I have to say at the moment so I did you know just what I showed you there but lots more of it and used the um, sword brush afterwards to create all these lovely little shapes that you might see in the background outside in the garden. Um, we'll just actually demonstrate one or two of these. Things. So it's again using this sword brush, making sure it doesn't get too wet, and just allowing it to create some lovely shapes for you. Dropping other colours in, bearing down. It will make all sorts of lovely shapes for you. Little branches, twigs, things on the twigs. So just play with this brush. Have a go first before you start doing it in your in your painting. But it actually, at this time of the year, is a very useful brush because you do see lots of things going on out there and shapes and colours and things. And you can put more than one colour on your brush. So that if you did something like this, you're going to get lots of colour coming into your picture. From one brush stroke so you can sort of play forever with this very useful but if you haven't got so if you haven't got um, a sword brush and you want to do these little spiky things maybe just use your um, rigger or, or something of a very very fine brush small rigger would do it okay so that's about all I think I was needing to show you. We did that, we saw that, that's dried up. You saw the background appearing on that one. Um, but this week I also painted um, the Triffid. Um, this is obviously um, a sunflower head. And at the time, this time of the year they, they really do take on some fantastic shapes and things. And I'm going to post this or attach this as as well as the photograph of it. So if you want to do something like that as well this week, then please do. And that's salt used in, in the middle of the thing there. And if I just pop that there, you'll see the colours that I used to actually paint this. All right. So I was just inspired by it sitting in the garden and popped all this background on to make it look... Um, as if it was growing in the garden okay um, obviously you could make it smaller bigger whatever you want to do um, so that's it for this week and um, next week we'll be into um, October so maybe it'll be a bit more autumnal it's not very really at the moment and maybe we'll see lots of lovely leaves to paint um, that's my idea for now anyway that's what I think we'll be doing and so see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.